Okay, I have a new generator here. It's an analog clock. Just go ahead and drag it in. I need to go over some features and things you have to deal with. First off, it's exactly 30 seconds long. If you change the timing on this, it will speed up or slow down if they're stretched out. So you'll want to keep it 30 seconds long and I'll show you how to deal with that in a few minutes. I just want to go over the features real quick. It has uh, these tick marks for the hours or you can select numbers. There's really no way to change the typeface I don't think. No. So you kind of stuck with that. Personally, I prefer the ticks. You can show or hide the second hand, which will come in handy if you do a lot of like fast forward effects or something like that. And you won't have that second hand flying around. It's up to you. You can tick the seconds like this. Or you can do a sweep second hand. You can set the time. Uh, time goes from let me set this up to the first frame because the motion is automatic. It goes from 12 to, you guessed it, 12. So you have a 12 hour time frame that you can set the time with. You can either drag the indicator or you can type in a specific number, which is generally how you will probably deal with this in order to get the accuracy that you want. Set that back. You can position this. And of course, anything that gets this little icon out here on the side, you can keyframe. So you can keyframe that, and you can keyframe rotations. You can scale it. It scales well because it's all Bezier features. Uh, the drop shadow works on the ticks in the hands, but not the face. I have this applied here, and you can see there's no drop shadow on the face. You have typical drop shadow controls here. Uh, you can change the colors of the various features. Face hands. This is actually a tick accent and if you're using number labels then you can change that color too and go back to numbers and show you there. And you can change the opacity of the face. So if you just need the clock which is really pretty cool I mean you can just use that over your video like that so if I show you on this one and drop the face opacity down you just have a clock in space you now you can set it up with the rotation and orientation any way you want so that you can blend it into your background if you want to and if you need to you can go to the video tab and for the compositing section you can change the mode to something that is a little less conspicuous. And your light's pretty hard. And things like that. Okay, so you have that. So now let's get to the setting the time, which is probably the biggest thing that you have to deal with with this. Go back to the first frame. You need to be on the first frame generally if you're going to animate this, especially. Otherwise, you can be anywhere. Um, set this to 100. One o'clock. 200. Two o'clock. 300. Three o'clock. Okay, so you can get a sense for where this is going. So let's say we want to set the clock to 325. 
Well, pull out your trusty calculator and we'll clear all this. So 325. So we have 25 minutes past the hour and we'll go to 25, divide 60. And then we'll put, and we'll multiply this by 100, just for clarity. So we need whatever the hour is, 3, 41.666. So we go back in, type in 341.666, or I think you can go four digits. And you have set the time to 325. So what if you want to set this to 325 and 40 seconds? Well, let's make it interesting, 42 seconds. Go back to your calculator, calculator, 42 seconds, divided by 60, plus 25 minutes. Now divide that number by 60, times 100, plus whatever hour you want, it'd be 342.8333. Okay, so we have 342.8333. And you have set the time to 325 and 42 seconds. The minute hand does not follow the ticks. It It's a sweep minute hand, a sweep hour hand, so that these will always be proportionally into whatever minute that we're into. And if we start play from here, we can see that it just goes right into the time. All right. So if we go in, say, now well, let's just starting from here. Let's say we want to start from this time and fast forward to another time. Uh, let's say, let's just fast forward to 345 even. I'm going to move the playhead into position to the time that I want this to start animating. And I'm going to add a keyframe. And then I'm going to move the playhead forward or as long as I want it to be moving in fast forward motion and add another keyframe. And then I'm going to calculate the time, the number that I need for the time 345 on a calculator. So I go back to the calculator. I'm going to go to 45 divided by 60. So I need 375. So I'll set this to 375. And you'll notice that the second hand is not exactly straight up. And that's because there is a sort of parallax between the animation in the keyframes and, and the time, the new time that we're setting up. So in order to back paste this a little bit, you're just going to have to do a little finessing. So we'll start with 374 and 16 seconds. Let's just start with a half. That's pretty close. And if we go up one more, 2.6. We're just a little bit past, so we're going to need to be at about, let's try 5.7. And there we go. And that's our keyframe. And now when we play through this, the clock will advance to the first keyframe, which will be 10 till, or 50 seconds past. And then speed forward to 3.45. 
and should stop on them and pick up from there. You can also keyframe this to run time backwards if you want to. How you figure that out, I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay, so here's a few tips on how to deal with this in your timeline since the generator is exactly 30 seconds long and you might not always need 30 seconds and you might want to resize this without having to create any distortion in the time because like I said if you shrink the the generator in the timeline it's going to speed up the clock and if you stretch it out longer than 30 seconds it's going to slow it down I have an example here of two of them together in the timeline I've got the time set up to where I've got this set for an entire minute and you can see that you can set the time so that it moves seamlessly you can see a change in the background opacity at the change but the seconds are uninterrupted it's a smooth motion so that's possible but let's say I only need 40 seconds well, what you can do without distorting this is select the generator just right click on it and new compound clip and now when you resize this let's say let's take this down to here the time doesn't change okay so you can use a compound clip to keep the animation exactly right and you won't have to deal with sections of your generator hanging out in places and trying to pile things on to disguise it or anything like that. Put a little fade out on this. So now when it gets to the end it could just fade away. And that's how you deal with it on the timeline without affecting the time. The best thing to do is to have the, everything you want on your clock set up to begin with and then create the compound clip because it's, uh, you'll have to go back inside the compound clip to make uh, changes to the generator and you don't have the benefit of having the background available while you're in the compound clip. So the best thing to do is just have everything set up first and then make a compound clip and then cut it down to the size you want and go from there. Anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.